Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and this is the last Video Clips for 2012. I can't believe we're doing the last of things now, um, but uh, the year is coming to an end. I have two topics that I want to cover today and one is concerning this issue of dairy and weight loss which just never seems to go away. Uh, the dairy industry has been promoting the idea that eating dairy helps with weight loss for a long time and you still, and, and there have been all kinds of efforts to get rid of this, I mean PCRM, uh, filed a complaint and won and um, companies, many companies by the way, promised not to use this type of claim in their advertising so that they could be let out of the lawsuit. Uh, but in spite of all this, the dairy industry still slips in uh, the inference that um, dairy helps with weight loss. And in fact, I heard dietitians uh, on behalf of the dairy industry testify in front of the Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee that dairy products helped reduce weight. So it's still going on. Well, the evidence continues to mount that this isn't the case. A new meta-analysis shows that dairy doesn't help with weight loss unless it's accompanied by calorie restriction. Well, this obviously means that dairy consumption is useless because we know that particularly in the early stages of a diet, however you reduce calories, you'll end up losing weight regardless of the foods consumed. So. This study included 29 randomized controlled trials with 2,101 participants and um, did not show weight loss as a result of dairy intake. Um, dairy intake ranged from one to more than six servings a day. The interventions lasted between one month and two years, so some of them went on for a while. In short-term studies, dairy combined with calorie restriction did result in weight loss, a little bit of extra weight loss, 4.8 ounces, certainly nothing to write home about, but it had the opposite effect in long longer term trials and the researchers concluded quote this meta-analysis does not support the beneficial effect of increasing dairy consumption on body weight and fat loss in long-term studies or studies without energy restriction so bottom line is get the dairy out of the diet my gosh it's a perfect food for cows but it is just not designed for human consumption the other thing I wanted to talk about has to do with um, our eating habits and an impact of our eating habits that we sometimes don't take time to think about you know, the basis for my recommendations are human health. Um, the evidence is quite clear that a well-structured plant-based diet uh, reduces the risk of stops and reverses degenerative conditions. And during the first few years of my career in healthcare, I focused on diet with almost tunnel vision with this issue of biological disease until I realized that there were a lot of other considerations in achieving and maintaining optimal health and that the effects of dietary change um, and choices go far beyond individual choice and individual health. I mean, the health of our planet right now is threatened by our god-awful eating plans, uh, choices and food choices, and our impact on animals, both as a result of dietary patterns and medical research, I think just can't be ignored. So um, last weekend, I spent with the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, uh, board members and staff, and anyway, a lot of time was spent on how current farming methods and misguided research result in billions of dollars of wasted federal money and unspeakable cruelty to animals. And I, I can say with a great deal of confidence that I don't know a single person in my acquaintance that could have watched some of the things that I watched last week and say that this was okay. I don't know any thinking people who condone this, but I'll just share a few highlights with you. First one is American researchers are very interested in alcoholism. Good reason for that, 12% of the population at some given point in time is addicted. Um, so the National Institutes of Health spends a lot of money on alcoholism research and one series of experiments that's being done at a lot of locations involves getting animals drunk, keep feeding them alcohol every day until you get them addicted and then withdrawing them from the alcohol so that they can watch what happens. And I'm wondering in what way can this research possibly be meaningful or relevant? Uh, we know that alcohol addiction is a bad idea. We know that people who are truly addicted have a tough time withdrawing. I, I don't think we need more research on that. And alcohol is a human issue. Let's face it, animals do not go to liquor stores and they don't attend frat parties, at least that I know of, all right? This is a human thing. So very little animal research is relevant. And not only is it the case in instances like this with alcoholism, but also drug development and chemical safety testing. So 
An example with diabetes research, mice are bred specifically to develop diabetes, missing a hormone that causes them to overeat. Now humans don't even have this hormone, they don't produce it. So the only way mice can become diabetic is genetically modify them to become diabetic, um, and manipulate them to become diabetic, while humans eat their way into type 2 diabetes. So it's not surprising that 78% of the drugs that are developed to treat diabetes as a result of animal testing have gone nowhere. You know, and even the drug companies are starting to realize they have a problem now and need to do something different. The statistics overall are awful. Every year in this country, 20 to 30 new drugs are um, approved for trials. And in order to develop these, we conduct research on 50,000 mice, 3,000 dogs, 2,500 rabbits, and 2,250 primates. Some of the research protocols would make you cringe. And for many animals, after months or even years of terrifying, painful experiments, they're just killed and um, discarded like so much garbage, and 90% of the drugs are never approved or, recall, or they're eventually recalled. So the end simply doesn't justify the means. Now, as a human being, this should concern you, and as a taxpayer, you should be outraged. The National Institutes of Health is the largest funder of animal research in the United States, and you're paying for this cruel and useless research. So PCRM's been working for years to end this atrocity with a lot of a, a success. Right now, there are only five medical schools in the United States that use animal labs in medical training. That's a big improvement. But terrible practices are still pervasive, and there is still a lot of work to do. So one suggestion I'm going to make, in addition to buying cookies from the Wellness Forum and other gifts from here, because we really make great stuff, you might want to consider giving a gift to the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. You can even make the gift in somebody else's name. Um, if you know some animal lovers, maybe those people would be happier with your supporting ending cruel animal research than buying them more sweaters and tchotchkes for their coffee tables, you know? So just think about it, pcrm.org. So that is it for now. It's it for the year, actually. And so I'll leave you with these thoughts. I think 2012 was a remarkable year. I think that the plant-based movement and people using and recognizing diet as the best way to treat disease, that movement is growing, gaining traction. It's really kind of an exciting time to be doing this. And I think next year is going to be even better. So I'm going to take a little break because I need a little R&R &R and time to regenerate, get ready for the insanity of next year. And I wish Wish you all a very very happy holiday season and a healthy holiday season so make sure that you eat well exercise every day and if you're starting to reach for something you know ask yourself would dr. Pam Popper eat this and uh, if not put it back listen to the little voice my voice speaking in the back of your head saying put it back on the buffet table and walk away all right so have a happy healthy holiday I will be back to you after the first of the year